praise the name of the Lord. It is another day that he, you are preparing to hear the word of the Lord. Today I want to talk about change. And in a Christian cycle we talked about repentance. And uh, we are going to get the leading from the book of Acts. Chapter 5. And uh, we are going to read from verse Chapter 5, verse number 12, that one. Act 5, that one. Allow me to start verse number 29. Peter and the other apostles replied, God our Father lays Jesus from the dead, whom you have killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own light hand, as a prince and savior, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We were witness to these things. So the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. We are talking about repentance. And that is one of the missionary preaching about the lordship and also the orientation the thing that people need to understand they were replying to the prince talking about there is another prince who is able to over repentance there are things that give man power to raise above circumstance in his coming to himself, that is coming back to himself. So when we are talking about repentance, is that feeling of coming back to yourself and mapping the way, having the light way to go? Is that bringing that conversion or actual turning to God or going for Christ for the grace. That's why he is talking about the repentance hard in hard with forgiveness. When you go to the the in the in the Old Testament, because we can trace the word from the Old Testament, the basic definition that we can have is that is a process of changing one mind. The change of attitude. Change from one to become a better person. The aspect of having a conscience, turning from evil. Consciously you turn from your disobedience to obeying God. You turn from idolatry to a life or living godliness. You can read in the book of Jonah at your own time when Jonah told the people, You must repent. In the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verse 10. And also, somebody like Jeremiah was fond of telling people to repent to live their life that are not good. As you can see in the book of Jonah, uh, that is Jeremiah, chapter 3, he was talking, verse 12, he was talking about returns, faithless Israel, declare the Lord. He was talking about returning, that is going back to God, moving away from your faithfulness, from the life that are not worthy. So the prophetic calling when they were talking about repentance is having a complete turnabout that arise from heart. Is like that one the conscious that the word that I'm talking about the conscious is turn about coming from heart. As a book of Joel he was telling people, 
in the book of George chapter 2, if you go there in the George chapter 2, George was encouraging people to, to repent from, uh, that is, uh, from the heart. Uh, George chapter 2, everyone, that is chapter 2, verse 12, even now declare the Lord, return to me with all your heart. Returning to God with all your heart. Then verse 13, return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate. So that was a calling, that is, you turn with all your heart. And also, is an aspect of considering your standing as a human before God. You turn from uh, ungodly and God living to a life of obedience. Life that you trust God. Life that you acknowledge God that is uh, righteous and also is uh, compassionate. And he has, <clears throat> he has good things for you. He has a good Good, uh, good for you. That's why in the book of Jeremiah he was saying, if you, li if you will return, O Israel, to me, I will put your disturbable idols and more my sight, and no longer go astray. He was calling them, if you return to me, O Lord. And the same notion was carried in the New Testament about the change, conscious standing, that is a response to the grace. As you can see in the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 17, this, the preaching of John the Baptist is that conscious, that response to the God grace. And Jesus himself, he talked when he was giving the commission or the great calling to the disciple is to preach change as a change of mind, change of direction of life from the self-centeredness to God or to Christ-centeredness. So, today we are talking about that change. We need to have that change because it's God calling. We, you need to feel as something that is uh, fulfilling, a sense of belonging, a sense of accepting your job, your family, your ministry. You need to, to grow from one level to another because God is looking for people who, is going to ch who are going to change. I would like to say that uh, many people, they are wondering, as a Christian, we have so many spiritual wanderers. They are moving from one place to another. They are not contented, but God is calling them so that they go to the place of content. God will want to grant unto you success of finding your way home through Jesus Christ, the Prince and the Savior. God wants you to have rest. That's why the, the Peter was responding, telling them, God exhorted him. He exhorted him to his own light hand as a prince so that he give to us repentance. He give the change, the change that you want. Two things that I would want us to understand when we are talking about the change. The thing that we are, we are talking, the repentance, the process of changing one mind, or allows the response to God, that the change is a gift from God. It is given to the person who finds himself too far Remove from what he feels destiny has ordained for him. There is nothing wrong with being long, but there is something wrong with 
with not making necessary adjust, adjustment to get things right. So when we feel that we are lost, we have lost our destiny, we have we are lost our focus. We need to refocus, we need to, re re adjust, uh, to adjust ourselves so that we may move toward God's ways. Even with the Christian community, some do not believe in God's ability to change the human heart. This unbelief in God's ability to change causes people to judge others on the basis of their past. If you do not believe that the people can change, you are going to judge them on their past. You are going to condemn yourself of the past experience, past circumstances. But there is power that can change you. There is that feeling of the fulfillment in your job, in your family, in your ministry, when you understand that gift of God, one of them is change of heart. He was calling the people of Israel. He was so concerned about the people of Nineveh in the book of Jonah, telling them, change, change, change. And for three days, Jonah preached and the people responded to, the, to that gift and they repented. And God did not uh, judge them the way that he had already ordained. He did not even punish them the way he had. So the dead issue in our past, they are, they are periodically revived in the mouth of gossip the unbeliefs but the good thing and the sure thing the lord our god progressively regenerates the mind of his children therefore don't assume that the real change the real repentance will occur without struggle and prayers and fasting the change is achievable when we accept that is a gift. The second issue, I was uh, based from the last part, I say that don't expect or don't assume that you change or come without struggle. There is a cost for change, the cost of repentance. We have to give or give up some of our lifestyle. We have to accept to change our attitude. We have to change our mind. We change the direction of life. Where we are going, if we are not going to the light avenue, in the light highway, we must change. We must change. And that is a cost. You have been used in this load but today we are being told that you have to change so that you may attain the forgiveness. You will attain that gift the Lord is giving us. We must change from the self-centeredness, egoistic, and now to rely, to obey someone else. We must bear the cost. We must bear the cost. So, the repentance is God's gift for the struggling heart who want to fight himself. The Lord want to bring you to a place of safety and shelter. And without the Holy Spirit help, you can search and search and still not fight repentance. You must accept the cost so that the Lord may give you the praise of safety, the, the shelter, the one that you want. The Lord will show the praise of repentance only to those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. 
the cost of repentance is you must hunger and thirst after righteousness. One moment with the Spirit of God can lead you into a place of renewal that on your own you would not fight or enjoy. You must bear the cost of relying uh, relying to the Holy Spirit of God. It is amazing when you rely in the Holy Spirit of God because you must taught yourself to trust God, to obey Him, and the change is assured. I like the song Amazing Grace. I have already mentioned somewhere. It was grace that taught my heart to fear a grace of God that taught me to fear the Lord. A precious gift. You need the grace of God so that he may he be the one to teach us. I said repentance is less response to grace. So without grace of God, there is no repentance. So we must accept. We must take with, uh, with joy the grace the Lord has already given us to us. When God give you the grace is through that grace that make change in you. You could not do it with your own strength. You could not do it with your own wisdom or talent. You need the grace of the Lord. So today, as I conclude, let us consciously turn from evil, disobedience, sin, idol worship, and uh, self-centeredness and turn to God with conscious heart to God. Let us change our direction and accept to fall Christ because it's through his grace that we are going to get more and more and more. God bless you. God do you good.